All right, today we're gonna to be building some canvas the way I build canvas, a couple techniques that work for me, so I'm gonna teach that today. All right, so first, you wanna start with a level table. Uh, again, I'm using the same kind of blocks that I use with my artwork, just wooden blocks, essentially. Got my piece of visqueen, and then I'm gonna start with Luon, which is like this really thin plywood. It works for my art because the resin makes the canvas really strong, so I don't really need very thick plywood. So Luon comes in four foot by eight foot sheets, just like any kind of plywood. Uh, I guess like Home Depot or Lowe's also sells it cut down into smaller sizes, but full sheets, four foot by eight feet. So today, I'm gonna be building a canvas that is six feet by three feet. So 36 by 72. So I'm gonna go 36 inches and I'm just gonna make that mark a few times just so I know it's where it needs to be by 72 inches. I like to always use a Sharpie instead of a pen or a pencil because the saw is gonna take out the full length of that mark where a pencil, you have to be on either side of it. Anyway, Sharpie works better for what I do. Just to be clear, there are many different ways to build canvas and, uh, and to build what I'm building. And I'm sure there's actually way easier routes to take than how I do things. So please, if you have any suggestions on how to streamline this process, any of the woodworkers that are out there, drop some comments, uh, forward, forward us some content. We'd love to learn some stuff ourselves. One of the most important things Eye protection, masks, gloves, safety first. I like to use a skill saw for this part. Um, if you've ever seen any of my triptychs like this, you'll notice they're all the same size. Well, when you're building canvases for a triptych, it's always a great idea to cut them all at the same time. Make sure they're all lined up and clamped, all the wood is clamped and literally cut all three of them at the same time. That way they're all three the exact same size. You don't wanna have one of these panels be like a quarter inch taller than the other one, cause it's gonna look wonky, obviously. Now we have the face of the canvas. And I'm not gonna worry about sanding the edges just yet because we'll get to that once it's framed out. Now, I'm gonna set these up on the top of the visqueen so I can move them around. All right, so when you're shopping for wood, at Home Depot or Lowe's or Ace or wherever the hell you shop, you'll see tons of these. You gotta go through them. You can't just pick them up and run out the store with them and just think it's gonna build a straight canvas because it's not. You have to literally hand pick every single one and check them to make sure they're not warped. And typically it's okay if they have a curve going one direction but not the other. Meaning if this thing is curved like this, then I can bend that out. But if it's curved on the short end going this way, it's ruined. You can't, you can't use it for canvas. You could probably use it for something else, but not for canvas. So for instance, if this thing has a big curve in it like this, so like if this thing has a curve in it like this, and even if it's a really bad one, you can still straighten that out and brad nail it to get it to not warp. But if it's curved this way, the whole front of the canvas is gonna be curved and you can't really do anything with that. So I hope that makes sense. When you're shopping for these, just eyeball them, pick them up, make sure they're straight, literally. Hope that helps. 
I will take one side, I'll take a square. So I've got this side all the way flush. It's perfectly flush. And then I go to this side and I take my square and I go over it, get right on top of it. And you can see that that is basically perfectly aligned there. And then I'm gonna make my line. So I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. Now don't expect for this to be the same length as this. It might just be a millimeter different, but that makes a difference. So always measure all sides. Make sure you've got the perfect amount here. It's perfectly flush with that end. You go back. Some people use clamps. Like if I wanted to clamp that side, here I'll show you just because. Like if I wanted to come down here and say, okay, that's flush and clamp it. That way it doesn't move. Perfect. So I'll come over here, measure it, get it to the very end. Okay. Now keep in mind the saw, I'm going to take, the blade is going to take out the entire black line. So that's why I like to use a Sharpie. It's about the thickness of the blade. So now I have those pieces. Actually, I'm going to go ahead and cut these. Now you can still use a skill saw for this as well, but it's a little harder to control and get it perfect. So I like to use this saw and I don't even really know what it's called. Maybe a table saw, band saw. I don't know what the hell you call this thing. It's a saw though. And that's pretty close. It has just a smidge overhang but I mean, it's maybe half a millimeter. Like it's really close. We're gonna cut this side now. Boom. I love how quick it is. So satisfying. Perfect. Okay, so now that I have the sides cut, now what we're gonna do is get the end caps cut. You know, in this case, if it were 24 by 72, I could just use the leftovers to make the tops, but since it's 36, I'm gonna save these and use them for braces instead. This is how I measure for the tops. Instead of using a tape and doing all that stuff, I basically take my sides that I've already cut and I stack them together the way that they would build on the canvas, straight up and down, not flat. And I stack them, okay? I stack them just like this on both sides. And then I take my other piece of wood Prop this up so it's flush or level, whatever you call it. And I'm just gonna feel it and make sure that it goes all the way to the edge. Can you see that? Now I come back to this end. I come back to this end and I do the same thing that I did with the sides, with the square. I get right on top of it. And I'm gonna mark it. That's pretty, pretty close to perfect. You do have room for error here. If you cut it too short, it's not ideal, but you can still brad nail it in and leave a gap. You can use wood filler, you can use putty. I use spackle and I'm gonna show you how I do it here shortly. We're doing the same thing on the other side. Just a, just a hair overhang. So if you see, there's just a little bit of overhang. So all I gotta do is take it back and cut just a little bit more off. So now you've got everything cut, which is like half the battle, okay? Now you're gonna put that other one back on the appropriate side and you're gonna set this up exact way that you're gonna brad nail it. I use a brad nailer, brad gun, and a pneumatic air tank. For this one, I'm gonna use long brad nails, not these short ones. I line this up perfect. You can also use clamps. I'm actually gonna use clamps just to teach 
uh, the easier way to do this. And I'm literally gonna set this up to where it's perfect on both sides, okay? And I'm gonna do it a little bit sideways because I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually brad nail it from the side there. Like I said, you do have margin of error that, uh, that you can get away with, but it requires more sanding and nobody likes sanding. I know I hate sanding personally, so. And what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna put two or three nails in the side just to hold the frame together. I like to go angled, that way it doesn't come unwiggled and undone. So I'll take my first one and I'll shoot it down. Take the second one, shoot it up. Third one, go straight. Now that joint is tight. I'm gonna do the same thing over here. And if you need to correct these, now's a good time to do it. I'm gonna go just like this. Now we take the piece of Luan or the face of the canvas. We're gonna take that out. We're gonna slide it out, but we're gonna leave the frame behind. Keep the same, don't flip it. Keep it in the same direction. And literally you're just gonna set this on top of it. You're gonna set the face directly on to the frame. And before you start gluing and brad nailing, you're going to look at it and make sure that all the corners line up the way you want and that the canvas is actually sized appropriately, all the one by threes and everything. So now, if you look all the way around, it's gonna be pretty much on point. I'm gonna have to like bend it out on one side when I brad nail it, but other than that, it's gonna be pretty close. So. Now the next step is gonna be gluing it. Again, remember which direction you took the underlayment off, because it's gonna go right back on top of it the same direction. So we're just gonna set it like this for now. And again, position all of these underneath your canvas perfectly. That way it's got something to sit on. And again, you don't want these to warp either. They're gonna to have to sit overnight and dry or at least a couple hours, so you don't want them to warp. So have support under them. I like to use uh, Tight Bond Original Wood Glue. You can use any type of wood glue for that matter, but this is what I use. You don't need a lot. A little bit goes a long way, but you wanna get a solid bead all the way around. You're going to set the canvas face directly back onto the frame, the exact same way you had it before. Try not to smear the glue everywhere. So now that everything's positioned accordingly, and I'm gonna punch this thing sideways through it again. Not wonky sideways, so it sh shoots out the side, straight up and down with the line of the one by three, but angled. Okay. I like to get one side all the way first, and I go quarter, sorry, corner, middle, opposite corner, and then I go back and fill in the gaps. That way I make sure it's pressed down the way it needs to go. I'm gonna go back and go the opposite direction. So now that we have brad nailed the whole thing, what you're gonna do, make sure there's no glue 
running over the sides. So just take your finger, your gloved finger, and run through the sides. You know, make sure you have a glove on. You don't want splinters and you don't want glue on you. So, okay. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna flip the canvas over. This part is very revealing because if you messed up, if you left any gaps, you'll be able to see them like wide open right here because you would literally be able to see light popping through. So let me give you an example of what I'm talking about. Where it had a big gap. Yeah, here it is. So if you were doing this part and look, you can see this huge gap right here, right? So now is the time that you look for those kind of screw ups so you can actually still fix it before the glue dries. If that's the case, you know, try to just clamp it and brad nail it. Maybe you just missed a brad nail, no big deal. But if the whole thing is off center, you literally have to pop all those brad nails back out, hammer them in to the frame and redo it. So moving right along, the steps that come next are you're gonna glue one nice bead all across the inside here. So I am just spreading the glue with my finger. Just basically, I go back and just run my finger over it. That way it kind of packs it into the crevice a little better. And I'll even put just a, just a little bit of glue up here too, just to make sure it holds up because we, we never actually glue the inside of this part of the frame. It's too messy. I avoid it. You could try it if you want, but you know, to each their own. It's not for me. That I'm gonna go back and do now are gonna be the cross braces or corner braces rather, not cross bracing, corner braces. If you look at this canvas, you'll see you've got these corner braces. They make the world a world of difference. They really do. They make a massive difference. Now it really doesn't matter what size you do. Just uh, try to make them all a similar length. I always use a bunch of scrap wood down here for these cross braces. I've always got scrap. And we've also got the scrap that's left over from this. So I'm gonna try to turn my saw to a 45 degree. So I go and I have them all pointing the same direction that I cut and then I just put a line on the top. That way, when I go to saw them, they're all approximately the same length. For instance, I'll take this. You want the, the tapers to be going in the same direction like this. Now I've got my corner braces. go back and I will glue this as well. You know, there's something about making your own canvas. You know, anything that you're putting your energy into physically working with your hands, I don't know. It's, uh, it's just got a different vibe to it, I think. Like when I used to order canvas from like Michaels or somewhere online, like Blick or whatever, that's great, it's convenient. It's also, somewhat expensive and you have to go with whatever sizes that they have available. So there's a lot of really great things about building your own canvas. You know, for one, you're putting your energy into it and something about painting on a canvas that you've stretched or built, it's, it's just got a different feel to it. 
Another huge advantage for me though, the biggest advantage is it allows me to build custom sizes. A lot of times I go in a home and I see a wall and I'm like, I know exactly what size this wall needs. I see a triptych there that needs to be six feet by four feet wide each panel. And I go back to the studio and I build it. Now six foot by four foot is a really easy size to find, but I think you get my point. It could be 33 and a half by 67 and a quarter, whatever. You get what I'm saying. Another huge reason why you would wanna build your own canvas is to save money. As long as you have the space and tools to build it, you're gonna save a lot of money building your own canvas depending on how much work you produce. You'll see some of these brad nails went astray and punched through in areas that I didn't really mean for them to punch through. So I go back with needle nose pliers like this and I just bend them until they break. All right, so it's probably been about 30 minutes. The glue's not quite dry yet, but it's not gonna run all over the place. So the next step is obviously let this dry. And you're gonna flip the canvas back over, is covering all of these little brad nail holes on the sides and everything. And also this step covers up any imperfections as far as like cutting the wood too short for the sides or any of that. What I do is I use spackle. This is what kind I use. It goes from pink to white. It's dry, you'll know, because there's no more pink. Anyway, so I take it, I fill all the cracks with it. And this is kind of like the technique that I do, because I want to get this stuff in the crack. I want to fill it all the way up. I don't want to leave any gaps in there. After I'm done going this direction, I switch it up and I go back the other direction. Some people might say this is overkill. This is what I do though. You'll obviously need more of this stuff. The more imperfections and waves and things that you're trying to correct, you'll need more of it. In this case, we don't really have many imperfections in it, so we don't wanna to have to sand longer than we have to. So the trick is to remove as much of this stuff that you can. So I go back and I just, and I'll save it, I'll use it for the sides. I'll go back. Now don't forget your little brad nail marks right here too. Always get the corners really good. This is one of the seams that is typically a pain. So I just cover it up with spackle and I try to get even the back of it back here really good. Now don't forget, you've got to get all of these little marks on the front of the canvas too. It's okay if there's imperfections, you're literally gonna cover all this up with paint. Yeah, if you forget to do these, they will show up in your painting. And then also tomorrow, when we go back and sand all this, we're gonna sand the edges too, so it has a nice rounded edge. We're done until tomorrow. All right, so it's the next day. And as you can see, all of the spackle has turned from pink to white. And we didn't even have to put a fan on it. So this stuff does dry pretty quick. What we're gonna do is we're gonna sand. I don't wanna sand it all the way down, but just enough to where it's flush. And I go top first, and then I hit the sides individually. And after all that's done, then I will go back at like a, what is it, a 45 degree and just fairly really quick hit all of the edges. So it has just a little bit of a bevel. You'll see.
know, one of the things that I like to do also, these stickers like this, total pain in the butt. So I'll just sand them off because trying to peel them off is really, it just takes too long. Back underneath it and just kind of level. Just, just barely tap it to just to level whatever's, whatever spackles underneath. And then the last part is to go back at a 45 degree angle, just like you literally just barely have to touch it. Let the, let the tool do the work. of these at once but like i said it's been a long time since i've actually built canvas this is the first canvas that i personally have built in probably two years but what i do is i dump a little bit on it that's actually way too much but we'll use it anyway it's all right threes that we used for this project are already primed white uh, but you don't have to use primed one by threes they're probably cheaper if you can find straight ones that are not primed because you're just gonna paint over it anyway but the one thing that we'll show through really quick here is like the edge of the underlayment so let me try to find an example like here basically that's the spots that you really got to be diligent about covering because that will show up in your final product. And now we just let it dry. 